Viewer discretion is advised. Not many can be found playing Among Us nowadays, but most can certainly remember the sus meme from it. Heck, that meme was probably what made the game as popular as it was in the first place. Hype over the game faded quickly though, as online games typically do. But I myself quit the game after a single playthrough. A friend recommended it to me about a week after launch. It sounded interesting, so I downloaded it. After getting the hang of the controls and learning about the premise of the game, I got to it. I was given the role of a crewmate. So there I was, running around like a moron, trying to do all the tasks. Nearly five minutes into it, someone called an emergency meeting. I put my thinking cap on, trying to figure out who the imposters were. With not much to go on, I threw a random guess and called out this player named Phonus for being the imposter. Several others followed my lead in good fun, but that player was odd. The stars have grown dim in this universe, unable to push back the darkness. And with them gone, I am nothing with none to challenge me. Malice cannot exist without benevolence. Perhaps I could interfere with the natural processes a bit. Yes, yes, that is what I shall do. But do not worry, I shall spare all of you here and spread my influence to others as a thank you. Farewell, all, and David, stay well. Um, okay? Whatever you say, dude. Guys, let's just, yeah, he's the imposter. Just let's get him off the ship. Imposter? Imposter? Me? I am Phonus. I was the one true god before you mortals walked the earth. The Olympians listened to my advice. I made great shifts up on Olympus. Yeah, well, you killed all your wives because you were sussing that they were cheating on you. Of all the Greek gods, you chose to call yourself after the one that personifies jealousy and romance? You're RPing a little too hard there, buddy. Yeah, kinda cringe. Let's just get rid of him. I really don't care if he's an imposter or not at this point. Whoever or whatever it was knew my name, and God knows what else. Needless to say, Phonus was immediately booted out of the ship. Then the game continued as usual. Oh yeah, he was not the imposter by the way. A week later, fear came over me. It was a kind of anxiety that made me doubt everything I know. That's when I went over the edge and did the unthinkable to my family. Hello everybody, I'm The Rubber. Today, we bring you SCP Foundation Heater Class Object SCP-5167. SCP-5167, also known as When the Imposter is Sus, is a hypothesized godly entity. He manifests within the online game Among Us as a user known as Phonus. Sharing the name of the Greek god of jealousy and envy, Foundation researchers speculate that the user may in fact be Phonus himself, albeit in a digital form. Phonus typically joins random game lobbies in Among Us. He'll play the game normally, that is until players begin voting on who the imposters are. From here, Phonus will start spewing extremely lengthy monologues and rants. The true anomalous effect of 5167 does not occur until after the games have ended. Those that interacted with Phonus will suffer from paranoia and Capra delusion. In other words, not only will they become paranoid about the world around them, but every person they see will also be fake to them, like an imposter. Victims afflicted by 5167's influence will engage in self-defense against these so-called imposters, often ending with disastrous results, namely the deaths of family members by their own hands. Thankfully, 5167's influence is not permanent and will typically wear off within a few months. 5167 was first brought to the Foundation's attention when they caught wind of an uproar within the Among Us community. Many claimed to have seen Phonus in-game causing a ruckus, though interest in him faded quickly. Despite this, Foundation web crawlers sent their learning computer, PSI2, Melville to track every single Among Us match with Phonus's footprints. Foundation agents were then dispatched to locate those who have interacted with 5167. Sure enough, all of them experienced paranoia and Capgra delusion. They were promptly cured, amnestized, and sent home under the false pretense of a mental breakdown. Unfortunately, even with the Foundation's best efforts, SCP-5167's point of origin could not be found. They did, however, learn that all internet access points used by 5167 came from various parts of rural Greece, 
thus lending credit to the theory that 5167 is in fact a Greek god. After Site-22 researchers' analysis of 5167, or Phonus's effects over time, I must say that I wasn't expecting what their report entailed. The first initial effects of 5167 had on victims were catastrophic. They were in such deep states of delusion that they had no qualms about butchering their loved ones. And God rest the souls of Bill Heth's family. Poor kid thinks they abandoned him. He'd surely go insane if I showed him the photos of what he did to them. All for the best, I suppose. Since then, the effects of 5167 have decreased significantly from birthing mass-murdering delusional psychopaths to now experiencing mild paranoia. 5167's influence is getting weaker and weaker. It's astounding, actually, and I haven't the faintest clue as to why. Now, this is just my hypothesis with some math thrown in, but I'd venture a guess and say that 5167 will probably self-neutralize by the end of the year. Fantastic, right? One less Keter running around is always great in my book. The following is game footage captured by Melville as it watched a game with 5167 in it. Observe. She turned and played the clip on screen. The players were in the middle of a discussion during an emergency meeting. Red, gotta say man, you're looking mad sus right now. Where the heck were you when we were all working on the reactor? No one had eyes on you, dude. You ask me where I was. Ignorant mongrel. I was alive when the mountains shot up from the earth the oceans when they were first poured over them. I was there when gods walked among men, their wisdom cast down like sunlight. Poor mankind back then were all as great as Nimrod. But now, I can hardly bear to associate myself with this world. You all putter around without purpose, no grand ideals to pursue. How can you be satisfied with this pitiful existence? All the gods I know are dead, cast aside by humanity, or crushed under the heel of terrors from beyond our imagining. I shunned my own existence and died so that I may awaken in a time of great splendor, in a world filled with life and glorious death, malice and justice. But no, none of that here. So please, do me the courtesy of allowing me to die, once and for all. I am so tired. You guys listening to this? dude? Red is sus as hell. Uh-huh, voting red. And so Phonus was ejected. Out the airlock he went. But this time, he was indeed an imposter. Well, damn, all right, so he was an imposter. I just voted out of annoyance. You have no idea how hard that guy was to work with. I mean, he was busy doing nothing the entire game. I was gonna try making up something for him and... What? Oh crap. Did I just suss myself out? I did, didn't I? The clip ended there, and Ross turned her attention back to her audience. After analyzing the clip, I decided to do a little digging into Phonus myself. Yep, god of jealousy and envy, all right. Funnily enough, there's hardly anything on the guy. Anyway, it looks like Phonus concerned himself mostly with romantic jealousy. That got me thinking. Why would he choose to manifest in a game like Among Us? My team theorized that it's either Phonus's envy of the Among Us fad, or the trickery and deception of imposters in the game. Phonus spoke about them dying from terrors beyond even our imagining. I shudder to think what would scare even gods. Even so, it is my opinion that Phonus survived those horrors simply because he cannot die. Being the personification of emotion will do that, I think. I know I'm kinda rambling here, please forgive me. But, I do think that 5167 should not be cast aside so easily. The ramifications of what this all means is serious stuff. I think we need to put more of the Foundation's resources into researching the ethereal. Just some thoughts. Your concern is noted, Director Ross. We thank you for the presentation. You are dismissed. And with that, Ross bowed and exited the room, leaving the O5s to discuss among themselves. So, we're just going to ignore her. Is that how you intend to handle all of our problems? Relax too. You don't think I'm not aware of all the blasphemous divine entities knocking on our doorstep? In all likelihood, these terrors Phonus spoke of could be the Scarlet King or Yaldabaoth. In other words, there's nothing to worry about. Even now, we're still at the cusp of complete annihilation at any moment, so I wouldn't worry about it. I think he's got a point, one. Don't you find it odd that Phonus suddenly arrived? 
Think he might be a harbinger or something that may soon befall us? Thorsten has been around for a long time too, and you don't see the world serpent wreaking havoc, do you? Well, no, but exactly. My friends, you all are too tense. Relax. Nothing's gonna happen. Just a silly little anomaly in some silly little video game. We'll get rid of it if it doesn't go away on its own. You sure you're one of us? You're taking this very, very lightly. Yeah, I agree with three. Hate to say it, but you're being very sus right now. Are you secretly working against us? What? No. I'm just saying that it's nothing we haven't seen before. We're gonna have this under control with the resources we have. Look, back me up here, guys. Come on. Yeah, I agree with one. Not you too, four. Can't believe we have two imposters in our midst. I say we vote them off the board. I, I. You guys can't be serious, right? 